I'm never gonna do this again, he says. These big projects are very unhealthy, very time consuming and definitely not something I would wanna go through again in the future, mm -hmm, says me and then proceeds to make another one. Well, as a wise man once said, People might mistake me for some kind of a masochist, which isn't true and would be ridiculous for people to think about. I agree, and you know why? Because this time I managed to actually cope with the huge time investment required to test 30 areas in this time for today for experience and skill points, which is streaming. Yeah, I started streaming and it took me like three weeks and I had nothing to do. TLDR, how did this project even happen? Well, I came back to BDO after two months of being away and after two months the game didn't change at all. I was excited to play the game, but I had nothing interesting to do, so I had to create a goal, something to do, which was make a season character, level the season character, and test experience and skill points only on a season character, because people said, oh, you cannot do the train mode on Valk if you don't have the gear for it. You know, you go to centaurs and supposedly if you don't have insane gear, you cannot pull insane trash per hour, which as you'll see soon enough, it's not exactly the case, it's very much doable on season gear, so is Manshaums and Dronaros and Star's End and even to some extent Sikraya. But yeah, let's begin the discussion. Fun fact, I actually managed to get myself a 14 day suspension on Twitch while I was at it. So fun times, indeed, fun times. It's already over by the time you get to watch this anyway, so drop by, say hello, keep me company and uh, yeah, like, let's I guess go through the boring details which you never really want to hear but you kind of need to know. Right? So here's what's up, listen carefully. What we do here is pick a season character with low enough AP between 225 for one shotable areas, that's what I started with, then it progressed into 235 AP and 245 for the high end areas which are Akman, Histria, uh, Sarzen, Sikraya, those. So around not even max our season gear, we go full train mode, full as fast as possible, we don't stop, we don't loot anything from the ground, I have tier 5 pets so that's fine, they can loot however much they can manage on their own and our goal is to just simply destroy the monsters, grind as fast as humanly possible and see how much faster this can be compared to maybe Corsair, which we don't really compare to, but you get my point, right? You might ask, why are you even doing this? Why not go on full gear? Because I never tested stuff on low AP and I'm curious to know a seasoned player, what can they actually achieve without getting boosted by just grinding on their own? And for that matter, I guess let me throw the rest of the boring stuff here. I showed you my gear, these are the crystals, I have these lightstones with monster AP art Facts just to maximize my AP and uh, let's just say I used uh, villa buff and sometimes church buffs as much AP as I could get for areas like Star Zend or Sikraya. And obviously uninterrupted grinding sessions and as always as you know already from the past big projects same experience and skill point buffs for every single area. That's why I keep saying the numbers themselves they don't matter because I have consistent buffs which means all we do is compare one spot to another it doesn't exactly matter how much experience you get as long as all of them have the same rate. Okay, done. Details out of the way. So, how did this endeavor actually go? How is a season character able to grind? For one shootable areas, Blood Wolves, Shira Ruins, Fogans, Nagas, very easy, just brain dead, nothing really different compared to full gear. For other areas like Gahaz, for example, I had to extend to the full rotation, the full map, the cliff side and the inside, literally both rotations at once. Only one Valk would be able to grind Gahaz on one given server at this speed. Kadris, the same, had to extend it massively. Crescents, the same, extended it into two, two full rotations. Same for Proti, I had to use two different floors just to not run into respawn issues. Other areas, Manshaums, Ronaros, Mirumok, Solo, were just doable but not at the full speed I would want so that's where you can start to see some decrease in trash per hour and then you have the questionables. Akman not as fast as I would like it to be compared to my main, Histria definitely could use improvement, Biragi then is only really fun if you have the Elvia weapon, Star's End you can die, they do deal decent damage and you need a full skill rotation to grind it and Sikraya, <laughs> Sikraya lower, mostly just 
just did it for the numbers, but especially on Valk, not quite recommendable. I also almost died quite a few times and I could probably min-max a bit more and get faster trash, but overall not so some place I would send a season character. And um, lastly, Waragons and Bassies, the season 3-man party areas, I did get two other season players from the chat to do these areas with. Eh, not recommendable, eh, it just that's the overall vibe. And lastly, lastly, boosted at orcs, brain dead, you just see there, obviously, just went there for the numbers, and same for guy fins, I went to get boosted to see should you get boosted or should you grind? You know, that's the question of the video. So that brings us to the charts and the conclusion. First, because I forgot and you do need a little bit of context, this is the patch about 4 months ago that started this whole updated experience idea. When they reworked Agris, they reworked a bunch of areas for Kafra stones and loot scrolls and essentially skill points and combat experience as well, literally a month after I made a big experience project. And fun fact, this is the Global Labs patch that I was sent on Discord and they are updating again for new areas for combat experience, which you will see in the chart, but my point is watch out when this video comes out and hopefully PA doesn't make it irrelevant again in a month. Which brings us, finally, at long last, after so much talk, to the big charts, the conclusion. They are both identical, as you know, from the past. The first one ordered for combat experience, from best to worst, and the second one for skill points, from best to worst. This October 5th, when I tested, when I finished the project, just so you know, in case we get more changes, and I should highlight Polyforest, Global Labs, the not yet out version, Bashims, and one more, Fadus. These three are buffed and supposedly if they come out the same way, these should be the changed experience numbers. The only change was in combat experience. So Polyforest, I guess the, the change will make it relevant enough, but Bashims and Fadus I would still not recommend for combat experience. Remember, we are just going train mode very fast, so other classes will have different results, but for a fast class in particular, I would say getting, getting boosted at Gaifins is still the best experience overall, but not by much. Surprisingly Proti, I don't know why I checked it, it's, it should be correct, Proti is the second best one for experience, which is just stupidly weird, because I would still not go there personally. Sigraya Upper, this area was supposed to be reworked as far as I remember, unless I remember it wrong, but it looked to be the same, the, the same old Sigraya Upper, still unrecommendable because everything else is trash, in my opinion, including the trash, the money per hour. Fogans and Nagas, finally something I would recommend. Fogans, Nagas, go here for experience. Biragi, if you can grind it efficiently enough, even without an Elvia weapon. And Mirmok Solo. I, yeah, Mirmok Solo, Fogans, Nagas. Those are probably your best bets. For skill points, they seem to have balanced them pretty well. Polyforest, Kadris, Bashims, Cactums, these are basically the same, copy-paste. I started the project with 1650-ish skill points and I finished it after all of the areas with 1.9000, so I got around 250 skill points throughout the process and as you know, the more of them you get, the slightly slower the experience you gain is, because each level requires a little bit more, so I expect these to be copy-paste, same results. Same for Fadus. Fogans, Crescents, all of these with 10 and 11, they should be copy-paste results, kinda the same-ish. And you can make your own conclusion from here. Trash per hour, do remember, it's all with a yellow loot scroll, the level 2 loot scroll, so that's what you have to use to get the same results. And monsters per hour are mostly from Marnie Stones or the Daily, or whatever I could use to track monsters per hour when I had an option and when, when I remembered to do that. So, are you surprised by the outcome, by the conclusion? Anything in there that you didn't expect? For me personally, I was told Bashims is broken for skill points and absolutely the best after the changes, but turns out when, you, when all you have to do is hold space and RMB on a Valk to do the train mode, it's really consistent in terms of grinding speed, and if you replicate that, 
it turns out polyforest, cadres, and cactums have the exact same skill point rate, so Bashims is not as broken, that was surprising to me personally. And finally, I can say, yeah, Mirumok Solo and now lately Polyforest are better experience than getting boosted at Orc Camp. So if you're gonna get boosted, just go to Gaifin's, Orcs is not exactly worth it anymore. That was surprising to me. Other than that, areas that are not in the list I just simply deemed ungrindable or not efficient enough for a season gear player. I could have maybe stretched it to go to Elvia Fogans or Elvia Nagas, maybe those can be done as well, but just maybe later, maybe at some other point in the future. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments, what area would you go and grind? What did you take out of this entire project? What surprised you, say, the most? And there is no big codes to celebrate this project this time, but there is an event ongoing in BDO. I'm, I'm so late to this, you already saw this from every other creator, I'm sure of it. It ends on November 2nd, the supporter content creator, and, you know, if you make any purchase on the BDO website, you can basically use my code, Please use mine, mine, not anyone else's, just mine, the duodecil code, and I will get a very small cut out of that. I'm not saying you should buy something, I'm just saying if you're gonna, use my code. Yes, please, thank you, and I will see you next time with a different project. Bye bye, definitely don't feel influenced and all of that, and I'm not selling out, and uh, yes, let's see how long it takes for PA to make this uh, big project irrelevant. See ya!